So, the last episode, we made it where we could spawn in our sprite characters and make them hide and show themselves at will. Now, in this episode, we're going to look at character configuration casting, so that way we can specify multiple of the same character and have that same art appear multiple times on screen for different characters of different names. That doesn't sound like something useful right off the bat, but actually it's quite useful. And let me explain why. Because if we have this generic character here, this may not be any one particular character. Like I said, it's generic, so we could have multiples. This is a guard, so what if we wanted two guards? Since we're creating a character, our character system is going to create one called generic, and it's going to log it in the dictionary. So if we try to create another one, it's going to say, hey, no, you've already got a generic character in here. Uh, see you later. Try again next time, buddy. But if we want to, we could specify a configuration cast to a character of a different name. So we could call this guy guard1, and cast him to the generic character, and then we could make guard 2, and cast him to generic as well, so they're using the same art, and guard 3, and so on and so forth, as many as we want. That is possible with configuration casting. So let's go ahead and jump into our character manager, and look at what we need to do to get that started. As we can see here in the character manager, in create character, it looks to see if we've already got this character in the dictionary, and then refuses to do anything if they already exist. And we want to leave that in place, because that's a good implementation. But we want to do something else. We want to make it where we can cast them, cast one character as another character. And this is, should sound very familiar to you, for what we did for speaker data casting. Basically the same thing. As a matter of fact, we're going to define a casting keyword here, which we'll use to identify configuration casting. So let's make ourselves a private constant string, and this will be the character casting ID. This is going to equal whatever word we want to look for, and that's going to be as, just like we did for name casting. Now don't get these two confused. This is not going to be something that is used uh, when you specify your speaker name. So for instance, when we actually go to integrate this into a dialog file, we would have what we have here as speaker data casting. This is already implemented. We are using name casting to make sure that Ellen is created in the scene, she would be a text character, but that she displays her name as Sarah. Okay, that's speaker name casting. Configuration casting is different. We would not do that in the dialog line. What we would do is we would first create the character up above. So we might do something like create character, and in here we would tell us which one we want to create. Essentially, when we say Ellen, Ellen is going to be automatically interpreted by the system as this command. When it reads Ellen, it's going to say, hey, does Ellen exist? If she doesn't, create character Ellen. But if we specify this before we make Ellen speak, then we could say Ellen as a generic. And then Ellen will actually be created as the generic character and speak with her name showing up as Sarah. So if generic had blue text and Ellen had red, uh, then she would be speaking with blue because she'd copy the config of generic. And if Ellen being a text character, she would show up as the sprite character because we're casting her as a generic type, which means we could do like guard one as generic. And we could just go ahead and cre create our cast and then make the character speak in the scene. And so we would get their configuration, we'd get the right asset for them, and we could have multiple of the same graphical characters speaking on screen. So we're going to follow with that casting ID, and we're actually going to grab this information when we come to get the character info. So we can pass in the regular name, or we can pass in the name and cast it as another one. And so this is where we'll identify that casting data. So, in test characters, let me go ahead and remove all of this and just pave the way for what we're doing. We'll say that character guard1 equals... Uh, let me do something and not kill myself here. Private character create character string name. Point that to character manager dot instance dot create character name. Alright, so then guard1 equals 
create character, and I would say guard one as generic. And then I could duplicate this, guard two, guard three, and just say guard two and guard three, and I've got three different guards, but they're all using the same art. So when we receive this character name, we need to check it and see if it does indeed contain that data. So let's do make ourselves a string array and call this name data and set that equal to our character name dot split. And we're going to split it by the character casting ID and then remove any empty entries. All right, now our name is going to be the name data at index zero. This will always be what is first in the list, regardless of if there's any splitter in there or not. This is going to get the first element, which would be the actual name of the character we're trying to create. And then we can get the casting name, but we need a place to store that. So let's go in here and say public string casting name equals this. This will define what character we're trying to snag the config and prefab and art and everything from. Okay, so then the result dot casting name equals, let's evaluate if our name data dot length is greater than one. If that's true, then we, we have casting. So we'll say name data one, otherwise it's going to be the same as the result dot name. So when we get our prefab and our configuration, we want to get it by the character we're casting as instead. So we'll say result.castingName. And so we'll grab the configuration of the character that we are portraying this one as. Okay, so when we create our characters, now let's go ahead and say guard1.show and guard2. Dot show and guard three dot show okay and in unity we get this we look at our console we have created a character for guard one guard two and guard three and let's just move these guys let me go ahead and move this guy to the left and this guy to the right and yes we indeed have three characters that can all be controlled independently while sharing the same assets so even though guard one doesn't exist in the configuration it would have been a text character we can see by casting it we get a sprite character instead and get everything that we want to show on the screen and so what i could do is i could maybe say that guard two dot set dialog color to be color dot cyan and guard three dot set name color to be color dot red then well I just had to do that uh, all out of order let's go to guard one dot set dialog font to be our temp font and I'll do the same thing for his name font and then I'm just gonna make them all say something Okay, so guard one speaks, he's got his own configuration data, then guard two has his own config, and guard three has his own. So we can see that these are three completely separate, completely configurable characters. And that's all for this episode. That's how we can use character configuration casting to create multiple of the same art characters on the scene. This can be useful in a variety of circumstances, and I'll let you be the judge of how you'll use that in your own project. So next episode, we're going to focus on a very important topic, and that is moving characters on the screen. So I'll see you then. Have a good one.